Yo, what's up, everyone? Excited to have my boy Evan Fom, who is a senior account manager at Reddit. We met through Landmark. Uh, we did the well. I I partially did the introduction leaders program with him, and we met through uh, a lot of landmark programs. Which, for those of you who don't know, it's like a self develop, like a I call it like personal transformation. One of the most beautiful programs, and you know anyone who's in that is typically out to make a difference in the world. And yeah, appreciate have appreciate you being here and, and having you on the podcast. Thanks for having me on here, Davidson, and really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, man. And uh, I, I'm super excited for today because there's not a lot of people I know who's as authentic or just as vulnerable as you are and just really op and being open about and being okay with just speaking openly about like more of the spiritual and psychedelics and the more exploration side of things. I think people tend to keep that on the DL, but I, what I appreciate about you is that you're extremely authentic and, and you are just a hundred percent yourself, right? You don't try to be someone who you don't want, you don't think about how others will perceive you like, like not in a bad way, but like you're just very authentic. And I appreciate that like display of, of uh, expression. Cause I think a lot of us filter ourselves depending on which environment we're in, but it seems like for you, you're the same, no matter where, which environment you're in. Thanks, Davidson. I'm, I'm glad I land that way. And it comes off as authentic and open, vulnerable, transparent. Uh, I mean, to be very transparent, I, I have massive filters and massive monologues going on in my head that, you know, I, I, I there's a lot of ambivalence and and uh, a lot of back and forth to you know sort out and figure out like what to say, what to put out there for people. And but nonetheless, I'm glad that you uh, it has been well received by you. And I mean, a few things go into that. Like one, it's it's always a dance, right? Well, one, you don't want to have too big of an open mouth because you know it's context. What's who's the audience? Mm. Who's uh, okay with me hearing about that? And and uh, you know, so that's one. Just got, you know, got to be careful. Uh, to some extent and two i think a, a bigger philosophy of mine is that what you what you hide controls you or you know what you choose mm. to keep keep under cover controls you and uh that's something that that uh i have always been mindful of and that's why i've never been a great liar as well because mm. i just you know there's the whole matter of integrity and you're you're incomplete when you lie or you're withholding and uh that just doesn't sit well with me so my best strategy has always been to just be open be vulnerable and share my you know share what i'm dealing with just because it helps me i got nothing to hide i got nothing to stress about mm. and uh and you know usually people like it that's interesting what you said about i my version of that is like what you resist persists not sure if that's like taken from landmark. But I feel like all these are kind of all integrating. Now, so it's like <laughs> it's common, it's common, right? That's for sure. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I think that's where we're very similar. Like I'm a horrible liar. Like I it's it eats me. I I, I can't sleep. Right. So I no, I appreciate that about you. And it's just interesting how from your perspective you think that you still filter things because that's just not my experience of you, but not in a bad way. Just like, like I said, in like a real raw, authentic way, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and again, I'm, I'm glad it comes across that way. I think it takes, takes a lot of work. Uh, definitely takes work to just, again, dance between those conversations and, and use tact, right? You know, we don't want to, I don't want to like unload all my emotions on you because who, who the hell wants to deal with that? Like, yeah, that's not, it's not very kind either sometimes too. Like, like, Hey Davidson, I'm having a rough day. Like my, let's say my, my, my girlfriend divorced me or my, my dog kicked me out of house. I don't know, whatever you might call it. And you just unload it there and expect you, the person to clean it up. Like it's not, there's time, there's timing and tact to it as well. And, uh, mm. you know, and you know, the, there have been few instances where I ask, like, hey, do you have enough space and energy for me to vent right now? Mm. And 
good to ask that. You know, not everyone wants to hear your shit. Not everyone wants to hear my shit and deal with it. So, so hmm. I think it, it, I, I had to learn. Let's just put it that way, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, you gotta learn, you know, some constraints and some, uh, it's, it's how to be tech. Hmm. That's interesting. You mentioned that word. Because I, I was told once that that was an area of opportunity for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, nicely put, like, you suck at it, so work at it. <laughs> yeah. To be more specific, um, as a sales rep, right, you, sometimes we tend to be the spaces, like invading other people's spaces, whether it's time or whatever it is, right? We ask for permission. We, we're asking for something usually. And um yeah that that was kind of reflected to me that that was not very tactful um and i was like oh and that still like resonates with me today because i was like whoa like y- you know um so that's good that's good man and um well first off kudos to whoever gave you that feedback because i'm sure it made a real difference and two let me ask you this like did you how did you respond to that sort of feedback <laughs> to be honest like it definitely you know hit me like it it was like I was like whoa it made me reevaluate things um and the takeaway from that now that that's years later is that never bash your competition never speak poorly about anyone you know because that's what it was ultimately um Mm -hmm. the way I went about it like now I can see that that showed my character right like so that's how I relate to a lot of like if anyone speaks poorly about their managers or anyone that I view it as like, I don't, I don't think anything of that person. Cause I haven't had an experience with that person yet. So I don't want to dilute that experience. I try to be a blank slate um, with, you know, it's impossible to be a hundred percent blank slate. Right. But I, that's what I, I strive for. Um, so now I'm very conscious. I'm very careful about ever speaking bad poorly about anyone or anything, you know, but I'm not perfect at the same time. Dude, uh, that's such an important thing to recognize and good thing you you got that. And I'm sure in your own uh, journey, whether it be through Landmark, whatever, like if, if we've talked about gossip, right? And maybe mm-hmm. we could talk about that for a second, but that mm-hmm. that is right up the alley of gossip. And mm-hmm. it's, there's, it's many, it has many facets and maybe, you know, uh, I take it maybe a bit more seriously than others. Uh, maybe or maybe not enough. I think maybe I need to take it more seriously. And what do I mean by that? Well, I personally don't gossip about people. I I seldom do have anything bad to say. If I do share something about someone, usually it's it's to uplift them in some way or reference mm. something. And and I would say like, hey, well, like this is something we talked about, and and I'm, mm. if I know, and this is coming through tech as well, right? Like I know that they they would be fine with me referencing this from them or quoting them, but um. So that's one thing where I like, don't, you don't want to talk shit about people because why? Because let me take an example right now. Um, oh, okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say names here, but I was, I was hanging out with someone recently and she was talking about, you know, her family's history, like uh, father and mother dynamics. And, you know, with her mother, she's got some history and she shared a lot and I really appreciate her vulnerability and openness. And I think it, it helped her heal just to talk about that. And I could tell her like, you know, give her some good compliments and remarks about their relationship and she appreciated it. But I can't help but like, oh shoot, like because she shared that with me, my lens is painted mm. about her mother. The next time mm. I see her, I'm just gonna think like, like, oh shoot, like she, is she like the, the evil tyrant that, mm. that my friend has been talking about? And mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty responsible. I'm, I'm not going to like let that affect me, but it's there, you know, my listening for her has changed me even before I even got to meet her. So yeah. gossip can be, gossip can be really destructive. And mm. where I, where I can take it more seriously. Okay. So I don't gossip about people typically, mostly, <laughs> maybe I talk shit about my friends just cause they're my friends, like in a more nonviolent way or for fun. But, um, uh, but when I'm like, for example, at work, like my human beings like to gossip, you know, and I like to fit in because I'm human mm. and, you know, they might gossip about, you know, certain coworkers and each other. And I'm like, 
you know, I listen in and I, and I join and I don't, uh, I don't take a proactive approach at stopping them from doing that. Cause I don't want to be that guy either, mm. but it's just, maybe that's an area of opportunity for me to develop, like learning, mm. like, like maybe if you and I were one-on-one, cause I'm comfortable with this, you might be like, Hey man, like my, my cousin is just being a real dick and I, you know, like whatever. And I'll be like, all right, Davidson, listen, like, because we have that language and that training, I could be like, all right, Davidson, let's, I get it, man. It sounds tough. What are you going to do about it? Let's talk about it. But otherwise, let's not gossip, right? Yeah. Huh. We keep each other accountable that way. I, I love what you said. Yeah. And the, the area of opportunity, well, it's interesting, right? Like, should we kind of be like, because I've had this kind of thought too, where like, let's say, like black black lives matters for instance right or stop asian hate right i i was almost pro- like when folks when people didn't say anything and they didn't take a stand i would almost make them wrong like i'd be like hey like if i saw someone get raped or punched in the face like i would do something but you know by doing nothing that's saying something but then i realized like how judgmental that sounds and me even saying that you know so i don't know you know it's hard to know what's really I guess there's no right or wrong, but I think I just, I'm very strong in my, my, my stand, in my, my stance. Yeah. So how do you deal with that, that Davidson? Like what's your strategy or approach now when, you know, these sensitive topics come up about race, discrimination, these mainstream topics, how do you deal with it now? Like, do you, do you still catch yourself in moments of judgment or, process that in a different way or what i think if people are curious they'll reach out and then i'll usually share our story about how it's really has impacted me like how a microaggression has impacted my um me personally you know um but yeah and now i guess i i don't preach as much it's more like with my close close friends who are genuinely curious i'll kind of share like a perspective yeah that's uh oh man i mean it you're preaching to the choir, you know, <laughs> referencing that. Like, I, I, I was one, uh, am I allowed to say the F word? Or... Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, you know, I was one uh, righteous motherfucker. And, uh, and, you know, we all go through that phase where we think like, you know, this is, this is the way the world should be. And this is how it's the right thing to do. And, and, uh, you know, I always saw myself as, you know, on moral high grounds or even the dumbest things like, mm. like what to eat, diet how to like oh. take care of yourself, you know, things you should or shouldn't do, what, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just, I think as you get older or as I got older, like kind of like learn to pick your battles, <laughs> mm. learn to pick your battles. And also, um, and you know, there's, what do I know, dude? Like, mm. what, what do I know? I, <laughs> I don't really know anything to tell someone to live their lives. Like my, all my ways of living are best guesses, our hmm. guesses at that, you know? So in regards to like Black Lives Matter and Asian Lives Matter or whatever lives matter, uh, ugh, someone's going to give me some shit for that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to um, say, um, nowadays, uh, like, I feel like we always have to be careful about what we say now, right? It's like... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take the heat. And, um, you know, you know, pick your, pick your trending, uh, you know, moment of discrimination, racism, uh, serious stuff in, in all seriousness that affects a lot of people's lives. But, uh, mm. but uh, you know, I, I had this conversation at our company where I think there's one takeaway I had from these conversations internally with a group of Asian Americans is that I, I tried to hold two competing thoughts. One of the competing thoughts is that, I'm trying to get my hands on the screen. <laughs> one of the competing thoughts is that nobody owes me anything and nobody's obligated to do anything and what that means is like if i'm getting beat up and they're saying you're on cross street like Hmm. step in or step out whatever it's none of my business Mm. like you know the best truth that i can go with is that that guy over there is doing his best Hmm. in the moment and i can be at peace with that now a friend of mine she said i disagree with that (laughs) I, I don't think that's that's the way to go about it. Huh. And it got me thinking and I and I realized and I'm glad she challenged that idea because I realized it's very one-sided because there's another side to it, which is that 
the, the competing thought is that, yeah, we should always strive to be better and we shouldn't, you know, you know, it's like police brutality. Yeah, this is the best we've got. America's standards are pretty good in terms of corruption. Uh, hmm. But, but, you know, we can't stop there. We got to strive for better, you know? So there's a, there's a, yeah, we got to do better. We need to do better. And two, also nobody owes me anything. No one gives, needs to give me shit, but I'm not entitled to that. That's deep. That's deep, man. Yeah. It, it, there's no right or wrong, right? That's the beauty of, of this work. It's, it's like, you, you know, like, I'm definitely more like your friend who's like, hey, if I see something, I'm going to say something. But that righteousness and who I'm being about it, like, is it going to be effective if I make that person feel like an ass? Probably not. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I'm if I have a good relationship with that person and, and you know, he, he might have said something that I didn't I perceived as a microaggression, you know, I might say something. Right. But I actually have to have that relatedness first or else nothing is ever going to land you know yeah yeah they're they're not obligated to do that but at the same time you you don't want to stand by and let that slide because that's you know that goes that maybe there's a moral component there's an integrity component um but yeah i'm sure you wouldn't want to stand by that yeah man man we're talking about some deep stuff already <laughs> uh, i can get into it quick dude yeah, <laughs> and i can yeah. also pull back pull back and talk about whatever uh, no 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 i i think like the rage like the rager i had on friday or <laughs> wait oh you went to a rave oh no i just i'm saying you know i can go i can go deep into into whichever hole you want and i can pull myself out and and uh talk about some rager that i had last weekend so yeah well i am curious as to because you were a uh, west coast governor for lambda phi epsilon for five years i'm i'm because I'm, I'm also like you like i'm really big into like that was a huge part of my life I'm curious to like if you could summarize like folks who have like no context into like Greek and specifically Asian Greeks, what how would you classify that those five years of your life? Well, it was definitely more than five years. It was my undergraduate years plus postgraduate years. So, uh -huh. so I would I would encapsulate you know those all those that duration under that that uh that um, tenure or that career. But I think for, for mainstream folks or, you know, just general folks listening to this, I would say it's a, you know, it's, it's good leadership training. It's good leadership mm -hmm. training, uh, learning how to work with the community and learning to work with uh, several different characters and it emulates, emulates the real world. I, I learned a lot about, business and running organizations and how to be a good leader how to be a good manager how to get you know how to move literally move mountains and what these mountains look like are like 30 dumb ass knuckle kids who just you know do not see your way of doing things and you know just going back to being self-righteous right like mm -hmm. and uh you know moving mountains like that or herding cats is like trying to get all these people to buy in on a better vision than mm -hmm. and you know where our current model is at which is based on you know consumption consumption and and uh, you know, partying and having fun and all great stuff. But you know, I, I had a bigger picture of like wanting us to be better, better leaders, better men, better uh, boyfriends, better husbands, better fathers, and and uh, better community members. Yeah. So uh, that was that's that's I consider it great training grounds. And you know, not everyone's going to have that same Greek life experience or desire. Uh, some people go there just purely for recreation purposes that's totally fine too but uh mm. I, I used it as a vehicle for other things more productive mm. what about yours yeah you you summarized it so beautiful beautifully of what i would classify i think mainstream media right or external people would look at it and be like well it was a lot of partying maybe like over consumption in terms of alcohol and whatever else you want to put in that bucket but um, I think you described it extremely well. It was my first real practice at leadership and really just, um, you know, how can I get people, like how can I work with a lot of different organizations, like other groups, so other chapters and then fundraising. So it was like my first like 
I mean, I did fundraising before, but it was like, I think fun, like he taught me how to fundraise, which I think is such a beautiful skill, such a useful skill. And um, I, I think we're very similar. Like I was very self-righteous too, in the sense that I had this grand vision, yeah. of this, this vision of what's possible, like mentorship programs, like scholarships and all this and alumni, you know, like I had, but, and, I, and I did implement like some of that. Um, but yeah, I think, it, but the reality is, right, like you said, the more people it is, the harder it is to, to buy, um, get on board, especially now that like a lot of them have kids and, you know, other priorities, right? Um, yeah. So I saw the beauty of it. And I also saw, like you said, a lot of the, the more, um, you know, I guess more hedonistic ways of being. <laughs> oh, good word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah i definitely got a lot out of that during that time and it still pays off in networking you know even now i consider this as well just because you and i have some relatedness and common ground in that and mm. and uh you know it's it's always fun meeting people who have gone onto national board for any of their fraternities because you're meeting the the top one percent of the organizations the top one percent <laughs> not in the party aspect or like drinking aspect <laughs> whatever but like the, the ones who actually give a shit yeah, and yeah. want to do something about it so yeah so you know i'm glad i i'm connected with you in that way like meeting a someone that cared or still cares about their organization and does something about it and and mm. yeah not surprised that we click in that sense yeah it, it's funny because like i i've always i've always felt like really connected to, to with you and a part of me died almost like when I left like ILP, um, the introduction leaders program with landmark for those who don't know. Um, cause you know, I think w that was the thing that connected us. Right. So I was kind of like, Oh, like I'm embarrassed, like saving face. Like I can't even show, I can't even like, I don't know. It's, it's, I guess sometimes easy for us to avoid and kind of like not have to deal with it. Um, so I think like, who I'm being about quitting, right? Like is something that I'm like, huh? Like what about that was so hard for me to be with, you know? Um, it's mm. interesting. And are you are you complete about that now? Or is there anything? Yeah, I think hanging out with you helped. And I think obviously being back on team, like I'm everyone on my team is all from IL. So we we have the same conversations every day. Uh, so, <laughs> it's, so it's kind of like, you know, I'm back in that conversation. And but um yeah, I, I guess. The takeaway was that it was, I noticed like it was even hard to me to be with you all during graduation because I made it mean that like I failed and, and you guys did it, you know? So that was like something I, to be responsible I, for as well. For sure, dude. I would, if I were in your shoes, I would feel the exact same way. And um, yeah, it's like a very human thing to do. And best, the best we can do for now is like making sure that you're complete about it and you're not dragging any like ball and chain and punishing mm -hmm. yourself for it because. Because that's not helpful for you or anyone, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and in a way, like where I was, like it was what I needed, and and just kind of having faith and trust that, like, I'm smart. I the decisions I make are for a reason, and just acceptance, right? At the end of the day, which I, I feel like we talk about acceptance a lot. Totally, dude. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> this is like. A weird transition but uh yeah man i'm really curious about like what made you so curious to like start to go on the spiritual journey like do you think is because like you're trying to heal trauma or do you think it's just you're just naturally a curious person so you kind of just like exploring like other aspects of yourself both of them <clears throat> and i love sharing the story just how i got onto this journey and it started back in <laughs> I was looking, I was trying to dig for this email, but I think it started roughly back in 2014. I organized a mastermind group of a bunch of actually lambdas, a bunch of national board guys, people who I really respected. Mm. And we got together and we talked on the phone every two weeks or four weeks. I don't remember the cadence. Mm. And uh, we were talking about, you know, books or whatever you want to bring to the conversation. Like, mm. It's your turn. You could talk about culture race a book a ted talk whatever and uh you know i actually missed that i missed that yeah. sort of format um and i'm proud of myself for taking that initiative seven years ago uh so one of the conversations 
not sure what it was about, but one of my friends, uh, his name is uh, his name is Charles, and he asked me, Evan, do you love yourself? And it was kind of an odd question, especially, you know, for a fresh grad, 21, 21, 22 year old. And I was thinking like to myself, what kind of dumb question is that? Like, yeah, of course I love myself. Like who the hell doesn't? And he pushed back and he asked once more, inquired once more, and I'm glad he did. Mm. Because he asked, again, he asked, no, Evan, do you really love yourself? And I took a good look at myself to see what evidence I could find. And I looked at my life and who I was at the time and what I had uh, to my name and what I had under my belt. And I realized, wow, like, you know what? I actually, I, I don't, I don't love myself at all. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I hate myself. I detest myself. I detest, you know, who I am. Uh, I thought I was no good, not good enough mm -hmm. and didn't have enough had nothing to my name, had no accomplishments worthy, you know, to, to uh, validate my existence. Uh, mm. You know, extreme, extreme words, but, you know, that was, those were extreme thoughts at the time. Mm. So that was a real eye-opener. And that's where my journey started. You might call that as a mm. awakening of some sort. Mm. Why? Because I woke up to reality that, like, wow, Evan, the school you went to, the, the jobs you've taken on, the relationships you had, the dreams you were chasing, they were all designed for the purpose of, of building myself up. Um, and they were constructed on fear, fear of not being good enough, not, not whatever enough, insert word, not, a, not successful enough, not, uh, not wealthy enough, uh, not tall enough, I don't know. Mm. Uh, whatever and uh yeah that's where my journey started from then on i i, I remember after I, I read a book called the power of now by eckhart tolle and my guy that book transformed my life um i i'd love to go see him this november if possible because he's a he's an old dude and i don't know how long he'll be around i would love to see him live and then i i read many books after that and then i explored uh, the psychedelic realm along with many psychedelic substances and um went to Peru for two weeks to uh, work with ayahuasca and, and uh, ayahuasqueras down there or people that, that work with them. And, mm. and you know what, it, it's, it's been a, a wild, wild, crazy ride since 2014. And I'm happy to report that I, it seems to me that the work is paying off in a sense where I'm, where I'm at now, I, I could say like, I don't, have much more than I have like let's say like two three years ago this is a this is an interesting thing like if I look at myself now compared to myself two years ago I might even say I have less stuff I have less mm. less money less stuff less wealth but I'm mm. drastically happier drastically more content and much more at home with my my own self and who I am and mm. uh, uh, where I am in this world and where I'm going. Like, it, I'm pretty excited about life and, and it, it took a lot of work to get here. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. Thanks for sharing and being open. Um, yeah, I, I can yeah. relate on so many levels. Um, I think, yeah, I think I, I'm similar, like in the sense that I, I, I really didn't not love myself. Like, you know, it's sad because everyone else loved me, you know, but it was because I was like, I catered to everyone else, right? I would just be, uh, I was being a people pleaser. Uh, so, so of course people would love me. I was, I drop everything I did to, to help others. Right. And there, there wasn't a lot of, I just didn't know who I was like, I, you know, and then, yeah, I think like similar to you, psychedelics, like really helped me look at a lot of and then I'd relive some of the trauma so it helped me process like some um traumatic or what I perceived to be traumatic moments in my life and then also it just had me see um I know the not too long ago we we did the heart opening ceremony but it helped me for instance like step into my parents shoes and to understand how hard it was to have a child at that age and what they sacrificed to have me and and 
putting their lives on stop to kind of have these to care for these three children right so um now I'm much more compassionate and I, I can understand my parents better whereas before I was just thinking about me 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 you know yeah. um yeah well what a, what a profound discovery for you and um I'm curious, I, I shared my pivotal moment in life that skyrocketed my life in the direction of kindness, love, and compassion. Do you recall a particular moment that was your pivotal, pivotal uh, in, in moment of inflection? So your pivotal moment is when your mastermind asked you, do you love yourself? Exactly, yeah. I, I would say that's it for mm. me. Or, Wow, that's profound how just a simple question had like such a big impact. Um, right? Actually, I never thought of that. And that's why I think it's so important for us to ask people good questions and help them discover it for themselves. Because, you know, uh, you know, if, if someone had interjected and said, like, dude, Evan, like, you, you clearly don't love yourself, you know, I would have like resisted and be like, what the mm -hmm. fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I've been through. Like, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Look, look at all my accolades and successes what the who, what do you know anyway but the fact that a friend was good enough to pose a question mm. and i i had the opportunity to look and discover for myself i owned it so thank you for pointing it out oh, that was a question it was a uh, a woke question or something. yeah it's so. interesting how the power of because most people when you ask that same question they would they would talk about an experience or like you know maybe the plant medicine or like more of the actual something drastic right but for you it was like just a question was enough it didn't have to be that all the extra stuff you know um yeah wow i never thought of it that way so lucky me <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah what about you davidson yeah that's a good question i think for me um the most pivotal moment was i i I went through this coaching program prior to Landmark called Accomplishment Coaching. So it, it wasn't like a, like a defined, like it wasn't just one moment, but it was the fact that I was crying um, 300 out of the 365 days that had me like really present to like, wow, okay, my life is not where it could be or where I wanted Three, to be. 300 of your 365 days of it? Yeah, it was it was oh, a year long. Program. It was a year long program, so it was like really intense. Were you chopping onions in there the whole time, or what? <laughs> <laughs> no? I was. I mean, it was beautiful because everyone, all my other participants, were like shared about all their stuff. So I was crying with them, like just kind of okay. like really, really being with all of that sadness and all of the trauma that you know rape victims have gone through, and you know people that just have, have gone through a lot. So um, that was part of it. Oh, but actually. Dude, oh my God, this is crazy. Now that you mentioned, actually, there was a defining moment, actually. Um, Let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. I think I might have shared this with you, but not not everyone else knows. Um, there was a Lambda bro. So for those of you who don't know, Lambda is the, it was, I guess, our rival fraternity. They're also Asian fraternity. Um, but he, he took IPEC coaching. So he was completing his coaching program and he offered... Uh, a sample session and I remember taking that first session with him and it blew open my mind because I, I realized that like I was like very it was that pivotal moment that I was like very depressed I was overweight I was not happy at my job I you know like I was just I had like a lot of like I wasn't I wasn't close to family like I had a lot of debt. Like it was just like a, a very low point in my life. I, I just felt depressed and I had like not a lot of stuff going for me. Um, and then when he gave me that sample session, he just believed in me and he really just like saw, he was able to see that I was capable of so much, you know? Um, um, so his name is Chris Wong. Milk Dud is his pledge name. Um, I feel like I, this guy... Oh, go on yeah he's a really cool dude but anyways like he was just like relating to me as much more powerful than how I related to myself and then that was when I kind of saw like whoa like someone else is listening to me much more powerfully than how I see myself and that kind of like it's like oh maybe there's a disconnect between how I see myself and what's possible compared to like how others like see me and that started me on this whole journey of like everything wow Dude, that's dope, dude. And uh, that, 
I mean, it's so uh, such a heartfelt story that you know you're down and out, not enrolled in your life, not excited by life. You weren't you weren't really loving your life either. It sounds like, and yeah. this person had a figure listening for you, and and that that got you thinking that maybe you're you're bigger than you think you are. Yeah. Have you ever told him that, or have you kept in touch with him? Yeah, I've t- I've told him. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, um, yeah, he appreciates it. You know, I tell him all the time. I think it's always like <laughs> that. That person that has had that much of a difference, sometimes it's uncomfortable for them to be with that praise. Sometimes, you know. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm sure you've gotten it several times in your life too, Davidson. Right? Like, I mean, there's been a few times. Um, maybe I. There's probably more, but I don't give myself enough credit for it. But there's mm. people have come up to me like, Evan, I, I, you know what you said to me during that one day at Rush? Like that just made the biggest difference for me in helping me decide wow. what to do. And, all. and I was like, you're welcome. I don't remember. <laughs> well, at least you say you welcome. Like, that's like better <laughs> than me. I would just be like, no, 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 that was all you. Like, I had nothing to do with that, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, and I guess that's something for you to take a look at. And yeah, I don't know. It may, but you know, you're not wrong either. Like you maybe helped them discover something and maybe it was all of them, or maybe, maybe you're part of it and say, Hey, like, you know, you could say you're welcome. Share that with someone else. I, I like yours better. You welcome as much. I think much better. <laughs> uh, but you know, you saw my face too. I'm kind of like, right, right, right. <laughs> They're still I, not willing to own it like a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that, I think we're good at that. Right. A bit of, maybe a bit too much humility and not willing to take responsibility for our power. Uh, yes. So, yeah, man, that's, that's dope. I'm glad you, uh, you know, you, you shared that moment and it's like that moment, you know, that moment that, that unlocked it all, that, that the moment of inflection that kind of changed the trajectory of our lives. Uh, it's always yeah. fascinating to hear that. And, and I'm curious because I'm sure this is probably a lot of people that haven't dabbled in this probably ask you all the time, or I don't know what people have asked you, but I mean, you know, I hear ayahuasca can be a, a literally like it's hard to even describe like that experience. But you know, what what do you think if you can put it into like human words, like how do you <laughs> like how would you describe that amazing uh trip to Peru? I want to preface first off and say that I think it was Terrence or Dennis McKenna, uh, one of those those psychedelic juggernauts. Mm-hmm. But really, like drugs slash medicine. I don't really like to say drugs all the time because you know it's a terrible connotation of what these actually are. But mm-hmm. medicine, plant medicine, you know they they show us what's possible. They show us potential, and you know. These aren't silver bullets. They're not designed to like, mm. you know, resolve all of our angst and traumas. Um, you know, we still got to put into work, but what it does is gives us a, a, a look into what's possible. Like, oh, wow. Like on ayahuasca, on um, mushrooms or on some other uh, entheogen or, or um, mescaline like San Pedro or peyote. Mm. And what, what these medicines, uh, spiritual plants do is that they show us what's possible. Like, oh, wow. This is what's life like. If I'm joyful, at peace, loving this moment, absolutely present. Uh, and then, you know, as soon as it resides, like it's, some of it sticks, some of the insight sticks, but you know, it's up to us to work towards that as well afterwards. Like, oh, okay. That's what it looks like. Now I got to work back up to that. Mm. Where people make a mistake is that like, you know, they, they take some sort of external substance, um, you know, whatever it might be, it might be money, uh, mm-hmm. relationship, sex, family, uh, job, or something that, that is external. But then, you know, when you take it away, then what are you left? You're still back to your old self. So mm-hmm. I just want to preface that first off. I think it's important to say. Now, getting back to the original question of, you know, ayahuasca and Peru, well, um, yeah, when I went down there, I just heard of it. I heard of it in the ether or through the internet at the time. And this was back in 2015 or 16. So pretty early on. And uh, funny story, like I was looking for like, okay, how the hell am I going to find an ayahuasca center in Latin America? 
uh, well, first up, uh, Google, <laughs> Google, and I looked up, I looked up ayahuasca retreats, and then uh, sure enough, I found on TripAdvisor, and I found one spot had five star reviews, uh, oh. and uh, and uh, I chose this spot out of many because I looked, I looked at each of the comments and the reviews, and the manager had responded to each of them. Uh. And I just thought that's a good sign of customer service. Hmm. So, you know, my yelping powers came in handy. And uh, so I decided to go with that one because I figured that they'll take care of me um, first and foremost. So I booked it. It was like 150 bucks a night. Pretty good if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, Lodging, lodging, medicine, everything covered. Went down to Peru uh, by myself. Gave my gave some information to my family members, my cousins. I said, "Hey, like, if I don't come back from the jungles in three weeks, have the army come look for me." <laughs> and uh, yeah, I went there, and it was it was a it was not a delightful journey. It was, hmm. it was actually it was pleasant in a lot of ways. Actually, it was a lot of fun, but it was hard work. Mm. It was exhausting, and it it it, uh, it took a lot out of me. It drained me. Two weeks coming back, I, I was in between jobs. I was supposed to start a new job, and I came back. Oh my goodness, dude! I I need another two weeks just to integrate. You know, there's a word integrate. When you go through a, an intense experience like that, you need time to just process it. Instead, I, I, this is probably a mistake now that I think about it, but I started my first day, maybe like one or two days later after, after coming back from the Amazonian jungles, sleeping in like a cabin, solo cabin with riddled with mosquitoes and tarantulas and, and mm. millipedes and mushroom fungus growing out of floor after a, uh, uh, heavy rainfall and mm-hmm. um, creatures crawling around at night. I, I couldn't sleep many nights because I hear like there'd be like thousands of eyes watching me. It felt like uh-huh. I didn't know if, like, if I was going to survive for next morning and I had to hope for the best and just go to bed and hope that I wake up. Seriously. Whoa. And uh, But uh, maybe I'm being overdramatic. Maybe not. But that's what it was. And uh, anyway, a lot of it was exhausting did a lot of ceremonies, learned a lot about myself, learned things like, you know, tell the truth, be honest, don't, don't, uh, you know, integrity, integrity mm. and integrity has a w- lack of integrity in a weird way, had a way of physically manifesting in my body. Uh, supposedly like when I like purged from doing a dieta, dieta, I, I'll tell you that actually, dieta was, was, uh, much more impactful compared to the ayahuasca. Yet oh. was like, not not no visualizations, no feelings of euphoria, no happy gnomes or kaleidoscope visions anywhere. But it was just like brute force, vile black drink where you drink it and you purge and and then you're you're writhing in pain for the next several hours. And I drank seven of those, which the guy was baffled. Like you, you got some warrior energy in you. Like nobody does seven first off. Oh. They usually do three. They usually do three first off. But I am the knucklehead I am. I decided to choose seven, and I and I huh. would bet and wager that you'd be a person that would take on seven, as well if you ever went to the spot. Uh, just because we're idiots. I like start with four, and then the next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, maybe I'm the only idiot here. And, uh, and yeah, that that actually healed me so much. It got rid of like wow. purge, a lot of energy in the bile. It was like all this green shit, and like I'm not a scientist. I'm not gonna not gonna. I'm going to take it with a grain of salt, but he said like, this is the result of you, like not, not speaking up and not telling the truth. Like it, it kind of feel like this, like mucus collects in you. And, and uh, you know, also from wow. like, you know, drinking and eating a lot of processed foods and stuff like that. And, and um, yeah. So anyway, I ramble on, but that experience was comprised of ayahuasca, uh, dieta, hmm. um, co- yeah. coca leaf ceremony and vegetarian food and, uh, coaching as well like lots of things dude that's that's incredible thanks for sharing um wow you said that was more impactful than the ayahuasca that's that's fascinating and that's why i prefaced beforehand as well like these things aren't silver bowls like you can you can get your own transformation through like nature probably like camping and getting away from phones and technology for 14 days like uh, hmm. that can that can give you uh, profound insights too and and uh there's there's some work involved it definitely helps it gave me 
gave me a lot of wisdom, that's for sure. And um, mm. but the work's not done, Davidson. The work is not done. There's still more to be done. But I'm in I'm in a much better spot thanks to the culmination of everything I've done in the last near decade. Mm. Yeah, I like what you said about um, you know you can really have a of great impact, like even nature or just being on top of a mountain or, you know, it's, 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 I think it's a combination of everything, right? Like for me, meditation has had a really profound influence on me. Landmark obviously is up there in the top. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, there's so many ways to, to transform. Um, but, I, but I, I do think like spirituality is one of those, like, really intense experience like or psychedelics is one of those like really intense experiences that honestly like have permanently changed me i would say if i was to summarize it i felt like just like a much more oneness with the universe mm -hmm. and felt very connected to like nature and you know the world the universe stars like people like i just felt there was my ego dissolved a little bit oh, i love that yeah there's definitely a oneness aspect to all of these experiences and what that what that also translates to is just absolute presence right like we become one with the the moment and the reality that's that's presence and mm -hmm. also another definition of love is the fullness of presence like davidson you and i right now we're feeling you know love in the sense of fullness of presence right here and now because we're just focused on having this conversation and connecting with each other and listening and uh, not trying to think about everything else. So in a way, this is, you know, we don't, we don't need, we don't feel like a need for anything else. Like we feel complete in this moment because we're present. We don't feel incomplete uh, unless there's some, you know, some demons or some shit we got to deal with, but right. Huh. Yeah, I feel like you were always pretty good at being present, right? Like, I'm sure many people would say, like, that's one of your strengths, right? Man, I, I do a good job deceiving people. <laughs> really? That's not your experience of yourself? Uh, yeah, you know, again, we talked about this even before the call, right? But I just think you're, you're, you're like that uh, milk dud, you know, having a good listening of me. And, you know, like, as we learn mm -hmm. the communication, we create each other in our, our own listings, right? And well, mm -hmm. thank you for mentioning that. And I, if in my head, of course, me knowing myself and all the crazy chatter and the monologue that goes on in my head, yeah, it doesn't, I don't come up, I work really hard to make sure to be that person for someone else, be calm and reliable and dependable and mm -hmm. at ease. I wanna make sure to bring peace to people, not bring agitation or misery or worry or suffering so i'm glad it comes up across that way you know hmm. at the end of the day that's fascinating yeah i mean it's just so obvious for me but i i guess like you said right sometimes we listen to others differently than how we listen to ourselves i i have the i had the same reaction when um i took this test and then my number three like biggest strength that according to the test that, that I took. So it was me like, but essentially the test said unconditionality, which is essentially just an unconditional love is my, one of my biggest strengths. And I was like, mind blown. I was like, how is that even on there? Like, that's totally not how I, I listen to myself. Right. Oh, interesting. So I was yeah. just like, I was just jaw dry. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? And I, I kind of sensed that same reaction from you when I said that. And I was like, wow, like, that's so crazy, you know? Huh. Yeah, that's, that's and likewise, man. I, I mean, as far as I know, you like you do strike me as a person that is, you know, I I, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's say if, if unconditionality was something that came up for your results, just because you know the Davidson I know is like someone that hustles, gets things done, does things for the Asian American community, does things for the Vietnamese community, does is a leader in the the Asian American professional sales space. So yeah, dude, I mean, when I think of Davidson, my, my understanding is that like, wow, this guy's a, this guy's a powerhouse and it seems like he really cares and loves community and being there for people. So, but for you to think otherwise, then, you know, that would be surprising. Hmm. Yeah, man. Well, I feel like we could do, I mean, I'm def I definitely want to do part two because there's so many more, uh, 
experiences I, I'm curious about in terms of, but I know, you know, we, you have the class coming up. Um, but yeah, yeah let's, yeah. let's do a part two. Let's do one with Josh Tan. I think that'd be dope. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We'll see where that goes. That, that will be a, a real, what's the word? A uh, Royal rumble. <laughs> <laughs> rumble. A real hoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, dude, Hey, uh, bring on whoever, man. Um, I know you know, you have good taste in, you know, people you connect with, so I'm sure it'll work out great. Yeah, I, I think the reason, so, um, and thanks for creating this, because one of my, I wrote this down in a notebook, like, a year and a half, like, right when the pandemic started, so around a year and four months ago, but I was like, one of my visions is to dispel the the psychedelics as a, as a negative, like, the way it's portrayed in, in media and so, as society is, is very negative. And I wanted to be the person that will completely flip, flip that on its head. So this is one step closer towards fulfilling on that vision. So thank you for- Great, I'm glad to be uh, your guinea pig in, in this. And uh, you know, I'll be the first one to take the bullet in moving this movement forward so that everyone can have access to it. And then we lessen the stigma of it and- yes. you know more Asian Americans or people in general seek this stuff out and, you know, start on their own journey, whether it be through a question or a good friend uh, that, that uh, is coaching us. Um, yeah. And I, and I hope that everyone does, I hope they do cross paths with it uh, hmm. at some point. Yeah. And reach out to either one of us. If, uh, if you want to ask more, if you're curious about more of these experiences and it sounds like we'll have many more. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Love you, man. And uh, have a good day. Have a good night. Thank you, Davidson. I love you too. And thank you for this. <laughs> All right.